because of financial strain and inflation, let's look at this next article here. Millennials are relying on parents to pay bills. Now, I can't say I'm the person without guilt. I mean, when I got out of the military, I asked my mom a couple, for a couple months, hey, man, can I stay at your house? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can I stay in the basement? Here I am, a sergeant in the Marines. Can I just stay in the house? 35% of millennials, 35%, over a third, say their parents pay at least one of their monthly bills. Housing is one of the large expenses handed off. Almost one quarter of millennials said their parents cover their rent. Who is this a knock on? Is this, is, is this a knock on, uh, on, on mom and dad? Let's go back to is, go, is, it, is it a knock on mom and dad or is it a knock on the kids? I mean, I, I would first assume that it's the first runner up is a knock on the parents for not teaching them financial literacy. That's number one. Not teaching them their kids on how to manage their money correctly. Not teaching their kids on you know how to spend, how to utilize their money for leverage, and how yeah. to you know do money the right way. But then at, at, at the same time, I also believe that if no, I actually I, I stand on that firmly. I think it's the parents completely one hundred percent. We can put blame on the kids. We can put blame on on, on the you know uh, the teenagers, the preteens, the young adults. But it's all rooted from somewhere. And although you yes, you have social media influencing, you have all these apps that force you to compare yourself on a day-to-day basis, that, that force you to desire a certain lifestyle that you potentially at the very moment you can't live, but you desire it, so you go above and beyond to live that type of lifestyle and just to post it on Instagram so you can get a couple likes so you can so you can feed your ego. I think that foundation of building a form of identity still falls on the parents as much as some, some parents don't want to admit it. But I don't know. I don't have kids, so I, I could be wrong. Let me take the flip side to that. Okay. Uh, so the, the blame is on the parents. I also say the blame is on the kids. I was 17 years old and I was out the house. My wife was 17 years old and out the house. Why are you allowing somebody else to pay your bills, especially mom and dad? They gave you a shot already. Listen, this may sound very judgmental, but the moment you take ownership of your life, the sooner, the better. The less dependent you are on anybody else. And by the way, it's going to hurt for a minute. Adulting sucks. <laughs> You put in your position like, oh, shit, mom and dad was paying for toilet paper and toothpaste. That shit's expensive. But the moment you take ownership of it, and you might fall behind. It might be painful. It might be hurtful. You might have these bank uh, and, and, and bill collectors calling you and shaking you down for your, your finances. It's an embarrassing type of situation. But guess what's going to make you do? It's going to make you rise up. The moment you allow yourself to have a crutch any time in your life, the moment you allow yourself to have a crutch, you're never going to fully grow to the capacity of your God-given potential. My mother was telling me about a story uh, because my mother, she's a country girl from the Philippines. And what they used to do when the chickens were ha- starting to hatch in the eggs, were starting to hatch in the uh, incubator. And the, the, all, all her siblings felt sorry for these little chicks because they're struggling to get out of that egg. Yeah. So what did they do? They broke the egg for that chick. Mm. But a week later, guess what happened to the same chick? Never got to stand mm. its, own, its own two feet. And that chick died. Never became a chicken. Why? Because the process of that chick to kick and scratch and fight their way through that shell, guess what it did to the muscles of that chick? Strengthen it strengthened them. them. Yeah. So therefore, they had the strength. As much as the struggle was, as difficult as it was, at times they couldn't breathe, but the chick fought her way out, survived, strengthened it, and guess what? Now they're able to live and stand on their own two feet. So therefore, Popeye's chicken can come by and do <laughs> a <laughs> <laughs> three-piece special with, uh, with red beans and rice. Your thoughts on that? Well, I actually have a question for uh, for you, since you know you, you're the one who've experienced you know the the trials that you've experienced. You've been married before. You have kids already. You've been in the trenches. Uh, you've faced life on, on your own. You've brought people up. You've given people wisdom. You have kids now that are around the same age that you were when you were going through your struggles. Yeah. Speaking to a Gen Z or to the younger generation, I would say anywhere between the ages of let's say 18 to 24, 25 years old. Mm-hmm. How does one build that mental callus to allow, to allow yourself to go through these trials and put yourself in the fire knowing that it's going to sharpen you and make you stronger at the end without being scared of actually going through it? You know, I, I wish I could say it's only for reserved for you know, late teens, 20s, and 30-year-olds. It's mm-hmm. not. Yeah. I see that with people in their 40s, 50s, shit, 60s, and 70s. They've never built a mental callus. They've always been dependent on somebody else. Somebody's always been helping them out. And, and as much as we can give a hard time to the millennials and the Gen Zs, the TikTok generation and Nintendo generation, I get the same thing to a bunch of 40 years old and 50 years old that they think that they can't change their life. You got to face something tough. You have to face something under pressure. Matter of fact, if you try to get in, for example, a lot of people at the beginning of the year, what do they try to do? They try to get in shape, right? In shape, yep. how, by the way, how packed has the gym been? Uh, for the next three weeks, pretty packed. <laughs> Mid-March... 
Completely empty. Right. Yeah. And that's an example. Yeah. Because m- the moment it starts getting hard. By the way, the workout we did on Saturday and the one we did yesterday, I'm still sore from it. Mm. I'm still walking around. But it's part of the process. Listen, I didn't work out for 17 years after leaving the military. I dealt with PTSD. I dealt with sores, aches, and pains. I was reading Tim Grover's book. Um, he, was, he was writing about, uh, he's talking about decondition. Uh, uh, it was called uh, Relentless. The book was Relentless by uh, yeah. Tim Grover, who's, who's a person trainer of Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Dwayne Wade. And he said in his book, we got to teach these guys. I told Michael he had to decondition. What's decondition? Your whole entire life, you're conditioned. Like in the military, conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. God bless you, you've been conditioning. But the moment you stop in that, in that rate, for sports, that's the same rate of conditioning, you also have to decondition. But what happens if you've never been conditioned? So that's why I think a lot of people are really focusing on their health. A lot of people are focusing on this time of the year to focus on their diet and exercise. And Milton, like, the, for example, when I started working together with you, and you'd ask me to jump up on a platform, how, how high was that platform? Not high at all. And how pissed, and I, I couldn't get, I couldn't jump up to it. I used to dunk in high school. I couldn't jump on it. How pissed was I? Your ego was pretty hurt. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. freaking crying. I can't yeah. jump on a six inch, one foot platform. I'm right. freaking crying. Yeah. I'm pissed. 1,000%. How many times do we work out and my lower back starts to flare up? In the, be- in the beginning, almost every workout. Even if we weren't doing anything that involved your lower back. How many times you put me yeah. to put a knee on the ground? I couldn't put a knee on the ground. In the very beginning, consistently every single workout, even when we were doing stretches. Even stretches. Even stretches. Fast forward three years later. How, how's my knees? The man's out here doing backflips. <laughs> how's my knees lower back? Great. Lower back's, lower back's great. It's no longer tight. Knees are doing fantastic. And you're increasing your mobility. Because I need to remind myself, I need to go back to the pain, the pressure, the stress, the resistance, the agony. And so, I, by the way, I couldn't do it by myself. No. You can't do it by yourself. That's why I needed to have Milton in my life. And you out there watching this, you can't do this by yourself. That's your ego. If you think you can, that's your ego talking to you. The moment you think... You got it all figured out. That's pride showing. Matter of fact, that's also fear showing up because what does faith say? Faith says, I don't know everything. What does, it, what does it mean for me not to know everything? I need to know somebody that knows something I don't know. That's faith. And you need to find that resource. You need to find that person to feed that into you, to take you to the next level in your life. And so I hope it's not too much of a digression, but if you're out there, you ask a mom and dad to pay your bills. You're living with mom and dad. Listen, the sooner you get out of that situation, and if you got to work two, three, four, five jobs, do it. I don't care about inflation. Do it. Three jobs, four jobs. You're, you're, right now, if you're younger and you have no kids, no wife, you're, you should be working around the clock. You 1,000%. should be working around the clock. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. Oh, man, it's about balance. 1,000%. It's about life. It's about enjoyment. Okay. Tell me how that philosophy is going to work out in the real world. In the real world. Not in the la-la land world, but in the real world where you really have to lean in on your faith. Because if you don't lean on your faith, guess what you lean on? lean on your fears. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.